welcome to our special ramen class today we are doing well our special new class ramen uh we're broadcasting again from our headquarters in kagawa japan my name is akira and my colleague megumi she's making great uh ramen noodles today so you know we have um uh over 20 decades well two to two decades of like running our ramen school and you know we have over 2000 graduates and you know um and we worked with like um or ramen professionals like chefs you know ramen shop owners um who have developed you know they are new uh noodle dishes uh ramen dishes like recipes and you know polish their menu items and um well of course like made their operations more efficient and effective and so we have a lot of knowledge and expertise on this subject of ramen so and then you know because of this um for wrong like COVID-19 situations, you know, I have been thought like, no, why not, you know, share um, this knowledge with you guys today. And um, so, uh, and I'm also gonna be talking about a little bit about like, you know, what goes on and how we teach, um, you know, our school, like what we teach ramen in our school. And so that's what we are covering. So, um, so that, you know, you can probably take a peek into like, you know, what we do or, or we teach our school. And then like, so you can start like kind of getting a little bit curious about it um, from today's class. So let's get started. But like, uh, as always, like allow me to spend just a few minutes uh, talking about us. And uh, so let's get started. So today we are talking about um, ramen 101. Uh, we are calling it but like just fundamentals of ramen basics of ramen. Um, so we are Yamato Manufacturing Company. Like you are 45 year old um, in this business of uh, craft noodles. So we manufacture noodle machines that are designed to do um, Japanese noodles. You know ramen, udon, and soba. Uh, fresh noodles from scratch on a small scale um, for um, maybe like use that like noodle restaurants, uh, small production at factory. And uh, as I said, like we've been running uh, noodle schools like over two decades. And so we have, you know, a lot of students, graduates. Um, and then so the what we what we're different is that like we so we help each of the students, you know, who has his whole own um, ideas for well, a ramen, right? Um, you know, manifest it into the real life. So, like, you know, we actually, um, you know, help them uh, create their own recipes from scratch, right? So that's that's what probably would, our school is different from like other other schools. Um, so we have uh, customers using our machines over uh, sixty countries or more. We have offices in Japan, um, eight of them, uh, including one in Tokyo, Osaka. Um, in Kagawa, this is our headquarters, and then, like we have um, um, facility used for uh, our school, and we have another one in Tokyo, and we have another one in Singapore, um, which is not, which hasn't um, been uh, working because of the uh, situation of COVID. Um, we have office in South Korea. We have another office in Netherlands. Um, United States, we have partners in different countries. And so we basically like the group of uh, noodle making experts who help our customers um, develop their noodle recipes, um, provide training and equipment and whatever they need um, to start their noodle business and, uh, you know, succeed in uh, noodle businesses. So that's, that's what we do. That's what, that's us. So today um, we're talking about fundamentals of ramen. Uh, so this is like just ramen 101. Um, so it's gonna be the basic uh, of ramen. Um, but ramen, what are we gonna talking about, right? So like what is ramen? An evolution of history of ramen and the components and patterns of ramen, right? And how about ramen is constructed and each components can be made from scratch. Um, namely ramen soup, noodles, toppings. Okay, and um, so Megumi is going to make um, major types of ramen noodles from scratch. And 
uh, later I will go into the, our kitchen, uh, ramen school, and uh, one instructor is going to show how board ramen is put together in practice at a real ramen shop, and he has some suggestions for um, you know ramen dish that you can actually well um, think about serving out of your own shop. All right, so um, so ramen is a type of noodle cuisines that were developed from Chinese noodle dishes. So, so in Japan, it's sometimes referred to as chuka soba or like Chinese noodles. It's a, it's a noodle dish that has three basic components, noodle soup, sauce, and toppings. And initially, it was only one type of hot soup, soup noodle dish, but it evolved into noodle soup dishes with a different taste that are made from different ingredients. And as a revolu evolution of ramen, right? This is an um, image, you know, I took out uh, from one of our um, blog articles on our website. If you're curious, like, uh, check, check our website for this article. So over time, ramen evolved into different um, eating styles by having less and less amount of soup. And these subcategories of ramen cuisines grew into something as big as their own genre of ramen. For example, in Japan, there are restaurants that specialize in serving only tsukimen dishes, dipping noodles. And there are only, I mean, there are also like Muslimen specialty uh, shops as well. So ramen has been like kind of ingrained in Japanese food culture so deeply that it made business sense to do this type of like specialty shops, but it may not be feasible in your country or like other countries. So a little bit of history of ramen. Um, ramen has been around for centuries. If you know, we include the, those like ramen noodle dishes like people enjoyed in China. But today we are talking about the ramen cuisines that was born in Japan over 100 years ago. And we created a bowl of uh, noodle soup that's similar to a bowl um, brought from China. We Japanese have a tendency of like making our own versions of the original. For example, like curry, pasta, dumplings to name a few, ramen was one of them. The history of J Japanese ramen is about like 130 years since first bowl of ramen was commercially sold at a re restaurant. And it was said to be actually shio ramen, not shoyu ramen. I think I shouldn't go into details of the um, ramen history, but like there are many, um, you know, like many good sources that talk about the history of ramen on the internet. So you can Google it later, but, um, you can also like check the website, like Yokohama Ramen Museum. Uh, if you don't know, uh, just um, Google it. Um, they have a vast information on ramen. And then I'll just talk about important points in the history of ramen. So 1884, like I, I said, like, you know, first of all, ramen was commercially sold and it was like uh, shoe ramen. In 1910, the first ramen shop, right, right, King, started offering shoyu ramen and it was light broth made from chicken and seasoned with soy sauce tare. 1930, uh, San Ramen was born when Horaiken started uh, serving a bowl of shoyu ramen that featured high hydration noodles that, was, that were handmade using uh, bamboo birds. That, that is like located in like Sano City, Tochigi Prefecture. In 1937, in Fukuoka Prefecture, a ramen shop, Nankin Senryo, started serving the first ever tonkotsu ramen, which was but like it was clear stock that was made by um, cooking pork bones for long hours, but without getting cloudy. So like it was clear broth. And in 1947, another ramen shop, Sankyu, made a cloudy tonkotsu stock by accident, and they started offering it. So the same year in Hiroshima Prefecture, Onomichi ramen was born. And it was shoyu ramen, but a strong taste from like pork, um, back fat added to the clear soup and flat noodles. 1955, Taishogen started offering suke men dipping noodles. The same year, miso ramen was born in Hokkaido, which featured tonkotsu stock with miso sauce and curry noodles. Around the same time, mazemen or like abrasoba started appearing in Tokyo. And uh, we eat this dish by mixing noodles with a sauce that's usually soy sauce based, flavor oil, vinegar, and other condiments. In 1967, the first shop of ramen Jiro 
started. In 1970s, ear gerbils started emerging. Around 2005, we saw the popularity of Tori Python ramen, which features uh, rich cloudy soup made from chicken crackers that was cooked for long hours. So we did all these um, classes on these types of ramen before. Um, so if you are curious about them, um, please uh, check our YouTube channel for the recordings of these uh, classes. And so, um, so there are many, many um, varieties, like variations of um, ramen types. And this is just a diagram like shio ramen, right? So shio ramen, right? Shio ramen, like you can have like single soup, like that's made of like tonkotsu, uh, pork bones, right? And you can eat that. Well, go, you know, from there, like to like cloudy, like thick, or like transparent light. And from cloudy, thick, um, you can have like from tonkotsu ramen, right? And if you're doing like double soup, which is like, which features like chicken plus some kind of sea seafood, you know, cloudy, thick, transparent. And if you, you choose cloudy, you know, you can make um, to pie down with um, seafood that she stock etc so and you know not to mention like you can have like different types of noodles well you know, coupled with this and then you have like shio ramen like you know show you and you know of course like miso ramen like so tone cuts like you know there, there are this infinite uh, number of patterns like variations you can do um using this kind of chart um and then like you know if you add like different toppings, you can add like different types of noodles, sizes, you know, just, um, yeah, infinite numbers. Okay, um, so let's talk about components, right? Components ramen. Um, so this is a component, a basic component, and it was like uh, ramen, both ramen like usually consists of like, when we're talking about um, ramen, um, soup noodles, uh, hot soup noodles. So it consists of like first like ramen soup, which is uh, typically made of like base stock. That's the foundation of it. And tare, like which is like seasoning and a flavored oil. And that adds aroma to um, the soup, right? And then noodles, noodles made of like three things, basically like so wheat flour, or like some other in grains, like you know, gluten, probably uh, flour and the water and a country and which uh, we'll talk about more about later and toppings and some kind of protein and then fiber so these are the main three components um so well run ramen shop operations rely on preparations and because the efficiency and effectiveness of ramen shop result from well preparations of these ingredients so the key to well run operations of ramen shops is having each component products prepared to predetermined specs in advance. So base stocks, sorry, like flavor oils, noodles, shopping, condiments, and even some kind of side dishes can and should all be prepared in advance. So ramen shops are where these components are assembled in proper ways to order. So ramen shop at least is a real shop for dining in business function as an assembly place is open these necessary components. So as long as each component is prepared to the recipes and measured and put together at the shops, we have a winning operation. We have solid recipes and reliable supplies of all these ingredients and sufficient resources, including labor. We can have a very stable operation, almost like a franchising system. So three components of ramen shop, uh, soup are made in advance and usually stored um, separately as parts to your noodle uh, menu items. And so, as you can see in this, uh, what, like, slide, um, so workers at the shop, right, assemble them to specified amounts, at, right, every time, like, when they prepare a bowl. So some of these components may be used for different ramen menus they sell, like, for example, you know, ginger oil, like, shiitare A, salt tare, C and thick chicken stock can commonly be used for like shoyu ramen or like shio ramen that they have. And um, so because of that um, operations, 
of a ramen shop can be systemized like this. It's relatively easy to centralize production and distribute necessary components to different um, business units. So this way of operation may be a great strength in developing strong business under the situation with COVID-19. So, um, so we're going to sh show actually um, how the how the board is put together like later, like a uh, no kitchen, but like this. So this is how, you know, we uh, put together. So like we have like tare, uh, predetermined amount like tare and the flavor oil, and then we um, cook the stock, right? And then um, add it to the base, add it to the bowl, and then stir it. And it like we, and then we add the cooked noodles and that's ready for plating. So adding the toppings. So we need to add noodles um, after we put the, uh, the oil on soup because uh, we need to, we want to like coat the noodles uh, with the oil. And each component has its function, taste and flavor. We all have what kind of like taste and flavor like experience like we want the customers to have when trying the bulb of ramen. So that should be the starting point of our um, recipe construction. So considering the balances of each taste and flavors and what taste and flavor we expect each company to bring to the soup, we also need to think about noodles, right? And the noodles usually dilute the taste, right? Especially salinity level of soup and sauce. Um, so when we taste the soup sauce by itself, like, you know, it's a bit too salty, but it would taste just salty enough like when, we, when the noodles are added to the soup. Okay, um, so we, we have to sort of like um, think about the final sort of experience that like our customers like have, like you know, when they eat or um, we try the bowl of ramen um, when constructing the recipes. So, um, so this is the, um, the ramen soup consists of like so the base stock right usually like 300 well like we, we are talking about like hot soup noodle i mean hot noodle soup dish and so like base stock like is usually like 300 grams per serving which can be made from like animal type uh, stock uh, seafood type stock like vegetable types like and other things like you know all in combination of these uh, different ratios and we also have like tare, right? Base sauces that that could that can work as like seasoning. These are usually um, three to fifteen percent of like base stock in terms of weight. This was the basic rule is that like the um, higher the density, the thicker the base stock, the smaller the amount of the uh, base stock we have to add, because you know the base stock is already strong in taste taste right we, we just need to like add a little bit of base stock seasoning to um, complete the taste the flavor but if you have like you know just light stock right we may need to add a bit more like seasoning to like and balance it and on top of these we are in the flavored oils flavored oils like uh, so the base oils we use uh, animal type and the plant type. The plant type like vegetable oils, like sesame oils, uh, animal type like um, a, uh, or pork back fat, like chicken oil, like lard and other things. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about each of these like in more details from now. Okay, so the, the base stock, right? So if it's a like noodle soup product, like we may need to cook a base stock from scratch. And a base stock is a pure extract of the ingredients that are taken out by um, boiling, boiling them in water. Ingredients are heated in water to release the essence into the water. The key to make making like great stocks is to get pure essences from these ingredients into the water without getting bad flavors that may result from scums. Scams are usually like primarily um, the blood of like animal type ingredients. So we are aiming at in production of like beef stocks to, to get 
um, as much liquid with clean and pure essence from these ingredients as we can in the shortest amount of time possible. The density of base stocks is another aspect of base stock we need we also need to like care about. So depending on depending on what type depending on what type of um, you know what type of uh, stock that we are making, right? Uh, we need to think about the uh, the density of the stock. So, um, in case of like, for example, like Tsukemen uh, stock, um, the density, you know, like usually tends to be high. And um, production of these like base stocks is the most like delicate, like time consuming and the labor intensive part of the ramen shop operations. So depending on type of uh, ramen stock we're talk making, um, and one mistake like during the production ruins the stock and then we need to start all over again, like wasting time, labor, ingredients, et cetera, right? So then, you know, we, we need to um, avoid the mistake at all costs, right? To And uh, keep producing high quality stocks over and over again like with consistency and because like we've done this like uh, many many times so there are certain points that we can follow to render uh, stable stock production and I'm going to talk about these points like in more details um, so these pictures like so I can show like um, how we make these base stocks like our school um, so each part is like cooking different um, ingredients um, and then uh, on the right, you maybe like notice that like, you know, we're making like seafood stock as well. Um, these are some of the um, animal type like stock ingredients that we use. Um, some like chicken, um, pork backbones, and these are like uh, pork head. Um, sorry, I didn't give you a pre-warning of like what's coming uh, in the image. Um, so, <clears throat> so I, I have like five or more uh, points that you know we, we should follow like when we are making um, uh, this stock with consistency. So we need to keep the optimal uh, water to ingredient ratios like while cooking, and um, to start cooking ingredients from uh, room temperature water, we shouldn't pre-boil the ingredients. And so, like, first, like, uh, over the past 20 years, we made a countless number of, like, base stocks and found that optimal water to ingredients ratio. That's two to one in terms of, like, weight. It's the optimum amount of water that maximizes the extraction of the instances from the ingredients. And we should keep this ratio throughout cooking. So you maybe will, like, see that this guy, like, um, measuring the uh, the water level so that uh, the height uh, from the edge of the pot till the surface of the water and this is the water uh, level or the line that we like we kind of like maintain and you may be able, like notice like some like some of the water facets that are sticking out right for each of the pots and uh, with this these facets like we can add a little bit of water right a bit by bit to maintain the water level um to well we add the water like little by little to sort of like maintain the water temperature as well to render the um, optimal um, essence in, uh, extraction so uh, we need to keep the water level and you know like keep water level meaning um keeping this uh ingredient to uh water ratio one to two okay and um Cooking base stock, right? There are versions, you know, I, we, we kind of talk about like the versions of uh, different base stock, right? Like um, if, you, if you make it simple, like light version, like thick version, and uh, even, you know, making stock like out of like, for example, like whole chicken, right? Um, you can make like light version of it, like thick version of it. Thick version meaning like thick, um, higher density, a light version meaning um, lower density right and so uh, we need to um, yeah so we like we need to um, 
skim or the scums out, like which are the sources of the uh, kind of bad flavors, like kind of kind of like kind of kind of bloody flavors. Um, so we need to um, bring the water to boiling, right? And then once it starts boiling, like the scum like start appearing the surface water, and then we start skimming them. And um, within like 30 minutes to an hour, uh, we can skim like skim them all. And then um, for lighter version of stock, um, we uh, reduce the heat to simmering. And then um, through, uh, they like you know we have like keep the water level right maintained until it reaches the uh, density of three. And when uh, for the uh, thick version, like we keep the heat high until it reaches like let's, let's say like four right and then uh, once it reaches that um, you know we stop adding the water to keep the water level but like you know still reducing the water amount of water to boil it down until it reaches uh, density eight so that's kind of like different um, cooking method that we use to make light version and thick version uh, of the base stocks and uh, second point is that like we should start cooking ingredients from room temperature water. Uh, we shouldn't pre-boil the ingredients. So if you cook them from high heat, other outer surfaces of the ingredients like solidify, which makes it harder to extract essences out, and it results in a longer cooking time. Also, we shouldn't pre-boil uh, the ingredients um, because we lose precious essences during the uh, pre-boiling. And <clears throat> another point I want to make is that, like, you know, we, sh we should use soft water. Um, hard water contains a lot of minerals, which make the extraction essence harder, as the minerals occupy space inside the water where extracted essence want to move to. So depending on the hardness of the water we use for cooking, um, you take tremendously more time to cook the same amount of stocks and a larger amount of ingredients to get the same amount of stocks. So um, using hard water is not economically sound, especially in the long term. So if the water where you do business hard, you should consider installing a water softener if you are thinking about in long term. It's so like kind of, well, simple device like this kind of water softener or like some um, people call it or like some some other companies have like uh, something called like reverse osmosis system okay um, so the key to um, making high quality base stock or even like greater ramen soup because uh, you know the base stock is uh, the key so um, that's that lies in like the extraction of ingredients essences into water without getting any poor flavors from the ingredients. So we want to separate and remove the um, unpleasant taste and flavors usually from the bloods like animal type ingredients which are pure in the form of scums in cooking water. And um, we also like want to um, keep the ingredients up for like inside stock pots not to get burnt at the bottom. The ingredients get burned during the cooking. The stock is ruined with the burnt flavors. So in that case, like we would have to start the process all over again, right? So this would result in total waste of our precious resources, labor time, um, money spent on ingredients, water, etc. So that's why we need to start the ingredients constantly in uh, stock pots. So another uh, major component for the ramen soup, like that's to dairy um, or base sauce. Um, that's basically a seasoning that's added to the base stock, right? And to bring the sort of like a direction of the taste in the soup. So without the tare, which can be soy sauce, salt, miso um, basis, uh, or blend of them, right? Um, base stock by itself, like taste blend. Tare is made by cooking or marinating certain ingredients such as dry shrimp, like shiitake mushroom, to get the flavors and essence like infused into the liquids. Uh, liquids that are, you know, soy sauce, like blends of soy sauce or like um, salt water, in case of, like 
uh, salt tare. This is like water and salt, salt um, dissolved in the water. So like it's really salty, like high salty level of uh, water. By resting the liquids for some period of time, like for example, one week, we can start using them as tare. Only small amounts of motodare are added to the base stocks, like, you know, as we talked about, like 3 to 15% to the, of the base stock weight. Lastly, like, uh, we have flavored oils. So the, these oils are made in very much similar ways and tare are prepared. So we use only certain types of oils, um, you know, for the, the base oils. Uh, the basic rules are like not to use oils that are like already carry like strong aromas like as flavors of the ingredients infused into the oils you know they they sort of like are overwhelmed um so usually like few different types of flavor oils are added to the soups to bring um some sort of, like complex flavor and aroma so we we at school our school like we use uh we make a lot of different types of oils from scratch, and then so we, we blend them at different ratios to bring up like kind of complex flavors. So kind of like just adding flavored oil to the um, you know base stock plus um, base sauce tare um, make the uh, the taste right taste of ramen is like dramatically different. So um, this is another like component, but that's very um, important one too. Okay, so like moving on to noodles. Um, so, you know, I use this uh, chart like a lot, like in the previous classes, so I won't like go into details, but like um, what I want to point out here is on this chart is that like uh, this chart like describes different types of noodles in terms of noodle texture, hard, soft, like, you know, chewy or not. Um, then sizes, right? And then um, what I want to point out here is like hydration levels. Um, so this like ramen noodles like are categorized by hydration levels. So this like three categories like low, medium, and high hydration ratios. And um, Megumi is going to show us um, three different major types uh, later, like when she uh, makes the noodles. And so ramen noodles basically um, consists of um, so like you know when thinking about construction of noodle recipes, uh, as for the ingredients, right? Um, we should think in terms of like solid and liquid. So solid ingredients basically um, wheat flour, and so we need to have like just three things to call our noodles ramen noodles, like wheat flour, right? Or like it could be like uh, other other types of like grain flours. Um, then water and a kansi. Kansi is basically, um, there are many types of kansi, but like basic ones that we use are like potassium carbonate and sodium carbonate. And so we consider water kansi as liquid and uh, flour, right? Wheat flour like as solid ingredients. There are some other types of like solid ingredients like gluten, egg. Um, we, we use the eggs in powder form, so we consider them like um, solid ingredients. And the other things, other types of grains, you know, rye flour, whatnot. And other um, thing that affects the noodle texture, like noodle sizes, you know, thick and thin, flat. And um, yeah, in another class of well, we're gonna get in like more in detail, like about like how, you know, we can um, construct the uh, noodle recipes. Uh, but like, this is uh, some chart I, I use, like, so um, so we have like wheat, right? These are like different um, parameters, like or factors that you, you should consider, like, you know, we, when you are constructing the noodle recipes, uh, hydration ratio and noodle size, right? Whether these uh, your noodle dish is like soft, cold, or hot, warm. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna talk about new ramen noodles like very, very briefly, like in this class, because you know I talked a lot about them like 
in previous class. So it's like if you are interested and curious more about them, please uh, check our previous classes recordings. Um, ramen toppings, uh, these are like protein and fiber and condiments like flavor changer, which is like kind of citrus, etc. Typical toppings would be like flavored eggs, um, chopped scallions like braised meat, um, pork, chicken, etc. So um, yeah, I think we should do some class on probably ramen toppings um, some other time, but um, you know we're not going to get into like details of like ramen toppings today. Okay, um, so that's what I had for the lecture, but the um, before we start making noodles, um, I have like some quizzes for you. Um, so ramen history quizzes, like we talked about, like so. First, uh, what was the first ever bowl of ramen sold in Japan? A shoyu ramen, B shio ramen, C tonkotsu ramen. Um, second question two: six, There's a ramen museum in Yokohama. What year did it open? A 1996, B 2001. C, 1994. What year was it when the first ever ramen shop, Raiken, opened in Asakusa, Tokyo? A, 1910. B, 1908. C, 1915. For those of you who have answers, uh, please send them in the comments. And it's get started. Yeah, so we have all these ingredients, right? We talked about, we just talked about, right? And uh, ramen flour, which is a protein, like so protein is important, right? Um, higher the protein, the harder the new texture. And uh, this is a low hydration ratio of noodles. And so the protein level is like a bit higher and it's gluten powder. Right, this pure extract of gluten, and then this is the egg white powder that's white eggs, egg whites in powder form. And so, this is a liquid, these are liquid ingredients we talked about, right? It's water and kansi and salt, All right? So, these are the ingredients. So, for the solid ingredients, you just mix them up the flour. And that machine is called um, Richmond One machine. And this particular version is um, has a C mark on it. So that's that's ready to be used in EU countries. And um, so for the liquid ingredients, we need to dissolve tansy and water into the noodles, I mean the water first and then like just to make us this solution. Just make sure that these ingredients are thoroughly dissolved to the water, right? Solution. And so this is a low hydration noodles. Low hydration noodles like meaning you know amount of water we adding to the flour is um it's pretty low. I mean the uh pretty small amount. If we're talking about like 25% to like 28, like less than 30% to the weight of the flour, to the weight of the flour. And then this mixer, uh, it's a 10 kilograms mixer and then like the minimum batch is four kilograms of uh, solid ingredients. So the amount we added, the solid ingredients like four kilograms. So let's say um, if it's like 30% hydration ratio, right? Um, that's 1.2 uh, kilograms of uh, liquid amount and um, but inside the liquid right uh, we have water can see and salt and so you know if it's with the water like can see is one percent and the salt is one percent each um, the salt is 40 grams and can see is 40 grams and uh, so the actual amount of water is um, 
1,120 grams. So that, that's how you sort of like calculate the uh, liquid amount and solid ingredients. Um, yeah, we we'll love to keep watching how the dough is being mixed, but it's a uh, yeah, it's kind of boring. So um, she she made the dough in advance, right? And uh, so we gonna start the uh, next process, which we call uh, rough foaming. So what we're doing is making a rough sheet of dough right out of the uh, the dough that we just took out from the uh, mixer right and you might be able to notice that like how dry how dry the dough is because the hydration ratio is just 28 percent the the dough is like very very dry very dry because um, and then uh, dry meaning it's it's hard it's very hard right so you need um, need a strong uh, sort of uh, rollers like big rollers to kind of process this um, dough hard dough into a um, sheet of dough right and um, so th this machine has um, rollers that are big um, in diameters, which you know allow us to apply strong pressure onto this dough to make it into um, the sheet of dough. If you do the same thing, like same um, process, like an impasta machine, down impasta machine, maybe um, it would be hard. I mean, we can probably like make like few batches, but like. Uh, you know the pass machine like would just uh, a break because the uh, pass machines usually have like kind of smaller rollers and uh, well we have um, good noodle machines that are, have that that are good with uh, smaller rollers but like you know they are for they these machines are for like kind of softer dough kind of higher hydration dough um, but for this type of hard uh, dough, right, low hydration dough, um, you'd have to have a machine like this with uh, bigger rollers. Otherwise, um, you know, well, commercially, uh, it, it, it's pretty um, hard to um, use like pasta machines to make these kind of noodles. So just making sheet of dough, right? Sheet of dough. <clears throat> and and so the mixer um, stopped after four minutes. And then um, we're, we're adding the rest of the water. So she added just like about like two thirds of it, and then um, she's adding the rest of it, and then mix it for another 11 minutes. So the total time that we mix this dough is like 50 minutes. And basically, the lower the hydration ratio, the longer we have to mix. And for other types of noodles, like medium hydration ratio noodles, you know, we mix it for like 10 minutes. And high hydration ratio noodles, like like udon or tsukemen, we mix it for um, just five minutes. So basically, the lower the hydration, the longer we have to mix. And what she's doing now is like we, we call this process like combine, combining process. So that those sheet is like still weak, pretty fragile. So we want to make it stronger by separating it to two sheets and then combining them into one sheet through the rollers. So that, that's how sort of like how we sort of like strengthen the dough to make it um, firm.
So th this process is kind of unique, I think, like um, for um, of a of a ramen machine. How the dough is like sort of like strengthened. And maybe maybe like hard to notice, but like uh, the dough that's coming out like has this like smoother surface than the uh, the dough that I know that that's being fed to the rollers. Uh, definitely, definitely stronger. So this process actually um, so as this uh, so this. This this kind of noodles like you know high raw hydrogen noodle like you know we're we're making now is the uh, kind of noodles that well you have like when you're eating like a bowl of tonkotsu ramen like tonkotsu kind of rich kind of white creamy so sort of like soup right and you have this uh, thin thin and hard noodles and so this. This um, noodles sort of like texture, right? It's very unique, um, and it has this sort of like kind of springy kind of texture when you bite in them, and it's 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 very thin and hard on purpose, and that goes pretty well with this um, thick uh, creamy soup. So this uh, combining process makes this uh, noodle texture. It's very springy texture. And so we usually do this um, process, like combining process twice. And this is the second time. <clears throat> So this class is about like fundamentals, of like ramen, and but like you know, uh, ramen has been around and like for over 100 years in Japan, and like it's been spreading around like in in the world, and then um, well, some some of the countries um, like United States and other like you know certain certain cities in Europe, um, there seems to be like uh, some ramen shops like kind of. Kind of innovating, like kind of like making their own like sort of unique bold ramen uh, using like local ingredients and stuff like, um, and then um, especially well, if you go to um, big cities like in Tokyo, right, um, it's very competitive, right, for uh, ramen shops to survive. So like you have to be unique, you know, you have like keep like constantly keep like kind of like offering like you know creating uh, offers, unique offers. The feature, like kind of like, well, ingredients that that were never used before in ramen, right? And so it's it's kind of interesting, like you know, we even even like every day, right? Like we watch some TV, like kind of featuring like ramen shops that, um, you know, feature like, or well, ma probably make like. Um, they are soup um, based only on like some uh, expensive like seafood, like you know, for example, like oysters and like you know some like a bunch of crabs, you know, that are usually expensive in Japan. And then they make, um, they just uh, get like all these like pure essence out of these ingredients, right? And then make a uh, very um, delicate, um, very thick, um, rich. Um, this stock out of them, so it's it's very interesting. Like in the day, just make you know ramen soup, right? It's, which is very unique. And I have some customers like in different countries, like um, uh, for example, like Northern Europe, like these guys like using um, you know ingredients that are like just only locally available, right? Some kind of bars I I, I heard, right? Some kind of small bars that are not like too small. To be consumed, right? And then they—I mean, he uses the, 
these bars to like make sock out of them and um which turned out to be like really good and he um he makes his own like homemade like sort of um miso right miso paste um homemade miso and uh, make uh, miso tare out of it and i i haven't tried it but like the heart it's really good so so I mean, it's just like there are a bunch of them, like there are a bunch of like people like who are you know being creative, like and then like uh, you know making uh, all of these like kind of unique products using local ingredients from scratch, right? That's that's amazing. So you know if, every time like um, we we talk with the customers um, who are opening. Or trying to open like uh, ramen shops, like obviously in different countries, different areas, and there's always an issue with um, the ingredients, right? Ingredients are available locally, but um, I think there are a lot of things that you can do, like using local ingredients, um, kind of being creative, and then like kind of process these uh, local ingredients in a way that you know you can use them as you know ingredients for ramen soup, like noodles and toppings. Okay, so um, so she's been like kind of thinning it, like after like second combining process, just start thinning it, and um, after second combining process, the the noodle structure sort of like inner structure of noodles is uh is complete, right? So all all she has to do is just thin it, thin the noodles, like thin the dough sheet to the final thickness, and you know she she would just have to like cut it into the noodles noodle strands and um typically um we use that kind of cutter this kind of cutter um that's that's like kind of like a paper shredder if you will um the dough sheet is like inserted like between the these uh, slitters and then um comes out like noodles, noodle strands. And each group of the cutter like joins the width of the noodles, right? And then, but like thickness is determined by, of course, um, the roller gap, right? Roller gap. So that's how you control the uh, thickness and width of the noodles, the noodle size. Um, it's very important for um, noodle texture. So, um, so actual thickness is like actually 1.2 millimeter, even though that sheet went through the like 0.6 uh, millimeters. So, like there's a difference of like um, like uh, 0.6 millimeter difference. Like so, the dough uh, expands by 0.6 millimeter after it's gone through the uh, roller gap of like 0.6. So, you know, we, we can expect the noodle to expand back by 0 0.6, right? And the final thickness we want to aim at is like 1.1 millimeter in thickness. So we set the roller gap to um, 0 0.5. And then, um, you know, we expect the final thickness to expand back by 0 0.6. So 0 0.5 plus 0 0.6, 1.1. So we should should be able to get we should be able to get noodles that are 1.1 millimeter in thickness, and yeah, 1.3 uh, millimeter in uh, width. So the mixing is done.
so the noodles are coming out and um, it's very thin and hard especially this kind of noodles because um, it's thin and hard uh, and then dry right so um, usually um, they are they're long um, because like thin and dry dry being like so like um, it's it's lighter than uh, like you know uh, wetter noodles, and so to compensate the dryness of noodles and then like the size of noodles, you know, we are making it longer. But like one serving tends to be like really small uh, on purpose, like maybe like 90 grams, like 100 grams, um, because uh, this type of noodles like kind of like get soft fast in hot soup right and so you know they they lose the noodle texture they they can't retain them like for a long time in the hot soup right and um so now she's making it like longer for bigger portion and shorter for smaller portion so you can you can easily control the the serving size pretty easy like at the at this volume like just uh, turning the bus the volume right you make it shorter, longer, a well. Um, so, so noodle, this type of noodles, like you know, kind of thin, right? They get soft, fast in the hot soup. Um, so we tend to make it small portion, um, so that you know people can finish them like fast, right? Um, while they're still good, you know, while they are still like al dente right otherwise like they can like people can't finish it like in time um before they get soft right and you know they they can't enjoy the the noodle texture so uh, ramen shops like selling these kind of noodles um tend to make it kind of small serving on purpose And the cooking time of these noodles is like very short as well, like um, maybe like 20 seconds to like um, the longest would be like one minute. So that's the that's a low hydration ratio noodles. So low hydration ratio noodles, and she made um, different different types of uh, ramen noodles in advance. See this is as like same high, 27 hydration, percent hydration ratio, like medium, 36% medium hydration ratio, and then 40% uh, percent hydration with like, so that's with like high hydration, high hydration, right? And this is like, it's like thick noodles will be used for um, tsukimen, like deep noodles. And but this is the same dough, right? Same dough, but like these types, right? Um, kind of like medium size, um, probably cut with like 1.5 millimeter um, cutter. And this type of noodles could be used for like hot soup noodles. You know, probably um, kind of like show you like like light uh, base stock. Maybe like based on like based on like chicken um cargos like light soy sauce um soup that would be like really good like it has this like kind of chewy and same time like real uh, kind of soft texture to it so it's it's just a uh, different hydration ratio different ingredients different flours and um yeah they like different uh amount of calcium and um for example, like this is just um, like a pigment that she used like to make them uh, yellow, and sometimes we use like you know eggs. Uh, sometimes we use like other other types of like uh, flavoring, um, coloring uh, agents, and um, but like it's it's very easy to do um, these uh, different variations. So um, yeah, so the next class um, we're actually gonna do. Uh, Kind of like focus on like noodles as well but like you know next class like i'm gonna focus on like 
you know, the most important um, foundation. If you, if, you, um, if you do this well, like, you know, you can make any kind of like um, noodles, like very, very good. Like, so um, next class is gonna be on like perfecting um, dough, noodle dough. Okay, so this is the, so how the dough is after the mixing, the low hydration ratio noodles. So it's very, very dry. And it's kind of hard to believe um, that we make into, make this kind of dough into noodles. Because it's very dry. It's almost like a powder, flour. All right, so I think um, I think our school instructor is waiting for us uh, in our kitchen. So we're moving to the kitchen in a minute. And uh, so this is where we do like all these like cooking sessions in our ramen school. And it's rather small, but like, you know, we maximum number of people like we can have our school is eight people only eight so that we can have like sort of like one-on-one -on -one session, you know, and then like each student has his or her own like idea for like what kind of ramen they want to make. Um, so, you know, we do the preliminary survey to check uh, what kind of ramen they want to make, right? What kind of goal they have, right? So that, you know, we can accommodate um, uh, better, right, for their needs. And we've got these um, big, um, innovation cookers, they're so powerful that um, so each of them ha you know can cook like all these um, kind of thick noodles, like heavy uh, thick uh, stocks, uh, base stocks that we talked about, right? I mean, like especially like tonkotsu, um, thick tonkotsu broth, um, thick um, chicken broth that you know we have to cook like for um, for like, ten hours to reach that density level. Um, so each of these induction cookers is going to be cooking like different types of uh, ingredients, you know, individually, um, so that uh, students can taste uh, how each of the ingredients taste, right? So they can do the blending, and uh, we're gonna make uh, 50, 60 different types like tare, right? Uh, Motodari we talked about, like from scratch, and then flavored oils. So we have like maybe like, I don't know, hundreds of like parts, right? Components, uh, ingredients to play around with. Um, it's gonna be like a lab where, you know, you can, you know, play around with these things, right? And then uh, good, good thing about it, this um, school is that like uh, among eight people, like eight students, right? So we have like students, like people coming from different backgrounds, right? varying like some experiences like you know even if you're not even if you like you know never touched a knife to like do any kind of cooking before uh you might you know end up like kind of working with um guy who's run his ramen shop like for like past 20 years right so much experience right but he comes to our school to polish his you know um menu items like ramen like noodles and um so if you're lucky, like, you know, we, you can get to work with like this kind of person and, uh, you know, he can share his uh, experience with you. Right. So it's, it's going to be like, you know, um, it's a, it's a very good uh, experience. And, um, you know, we, we hope, um, you know, things will be back, be back to normal. And then, uh, you guys will be able to like come to school, uh, soon. All right. Um, so we have, uh, we have our chief instructor, Mr. Keda, and he's going to teach us um, basic ramen, visible ramen, right? And then uh, one one type of ramen like he suggests um, that would be good during this um, uh, situation with COVID. Okay. So two types of ramen like he's uh, going to show us today. Thank you. 
So the first one would be like uh, the traditional, like conventional, um, the ramen, the bowl ramen, the hot soup. And another one is like mazemen. So it's gonna make like mazemen first. And it's a noodles that like he um, hand rubbed and it made, to make them curly. And a cooking time is like two minutes. So while we're cooking the noodles, uh, let me explain the ingredients. So th these are considered like all these toppings, so you can prepare like whatever you want. And so we're gonna stack them up like, and then, you know, um, customers can see like from the side. So we want to make like um, layers with like, different colors and to make it beautiful. And then the in terms of texture, right? Um, so if we want to like mix like different ingredients that are like, you know, varying like hardness, or, like you know, softness, like chewiness, and that would give them like a different sensations in terms of texture. So once the noodles are cooked, right, um, we're gonna strain them out and then like uh, put in the oil and then uh, we're gonna uh, mix them up in the bowl. So this is a flavored oil. So um, we use the, uh, like if this is gonna be cold dish, so like uh, if you use the animal type oils, they're gonna solidify, so we use the uh, plant-based oils this time. And then tar, like not to dare, it'll be like uh, soy sauce based. So once the noodles are done, right, um, I need to uh, wash them, wash them like to remove um, as much starch as possible. So I wanna move as much starch as possible, like kind of kind of slimy textured um, starch. And then just push them lightly to get that water out. I'm gonna add like oil, put the oil, and then stir it, like mix it. So the container, I'm um, gonna use this kind of container today, right? And then uh, pour the uh, tare. And then um, I can probably like kind of mix it in a bowl, the tare, right? But like, um, I'm, I'm kind of a bit like, concerned about the color that you know, customers can see from the side, right? Uh, so I just added the tare like in the bottom, the cup. And I'll start stacking up the uh, ingredients. So the carrots and the cucumbers and purple cabbage. And some leaves. Avocados. This is a cashew chopped into cubes. Tomatoes. And 
and it's really leaks like thinly sliced leaks and thinly sliced uh, chili peppers okay so I can put the lid on and uh, serve it to the customers. And uh, when uh, customers can I actually shake it up, right, um, to sort of like some kind of like you know, like the story, right? Start everything it, and um, yeah, they eat it like so. The tare like is is um I mean it's like like all the areas and um, so it's it's very easy to eat and uh, ready for takeout and um, the noodle texture uh, lasts a while because it's, it's cold and uh, so it's it's a I think it's this is a great item for um, you know the time to come like you know kind of like it's getting warmer right uh, it's gonna be a great item for takeout Okay, so next, um, I'm gonna do the traditional um, ramen, right? So this is just a fundamental uh, ramen, like one-on-one -on -one class. So um, I'm just gonna show you uh, just the traditional, so how the, the bowl ramen is put together, right, in practice. Okay. So this is the base, stock that we talked about like it's the light version chicken stock it's the um stock that's made from um light stock that's made of like chicken hoggers the noodles um are cooked in one minute I'm going to start cooking. So I'm going to prepare the bowl, right? And um, so pour the oil, right? And then um, pour the tare, right? And these ladles, right, ladles are like kind of designed in a way that like, you know, you can measure um, the certain amount of like tare and oil, right? So you can like, there are many different types of like sizes, for the sizes and like different like quantity of like tare, like, you know, if you have like predetermined amount of tare like you're adding, uh, then you can choose that particular ladle. And, you know, we warm the base stock and then adding it to the bowl, right, and then get mixed with tare and oil. So you need to remember this order of serving, like putting together a bowl. So yellow noodles and black, kind of light, light dark. Um, Soup, it's beautiful. And I'm gonna play the play the toppings. This is chashu, like kind of braised pork, like sliced braised pork meat. And you call it memor. Um, it's a, a braised like bamboo shoot. Kind of difficult, like kind of then chopped up leeks, right? And it's nori, uh, dry seaweed. You stick it like that. And so this is like very, very traditional um, shoyu ramen that, you know, some people like refer it as uh, chuka soba that like, you know, we, we kind of talked about like kind of, kind of like early days of like kind of ramen um, dish bowl of uh, ramen.
you know, kind of early days, very early days. Uh, uh, okay, I have a I have a question. Like some people ask, like if um, this mazaman, right? This one like is be like too salty at the bottom, right? Um, the answer is no. Like um, we um, we shake it up, right? And so like um, the yeah, if like if you don't shake it, like and then just eat the bottom of it, like it'd be like too salty. But like you know, we shake it, and then like all these like sauce would be like kind of while well, coating all the areas like noodles and then like all these uh, other toppings so they're going to be balanced all right so i think we don't have any more questions and um yeah so so like ramen uh is the topic ramen like you know is really deep and like um you know it's not gonna be able like we're gonna be able to like, cover like just one class so we have to do like maybe um more like 10 maybe 20 of these classes right i mean to go into like seriously like serious depth right um you know as as deeply as like maybe like some of you like you know maybe able to, like start like cooking your own like authentic ramen both ramen right on your own um so you know we'll uh we'll keep doing that uh in the future classes and uh, so you know think of this class as like kind of starting point and uh we'll uh we'll love to uh share um some of the top some of the like uh expertise like some of the experiences like some of the knowledge we have uh we um teach at our school and for those of you like who are interested in like you know more details about like what we do what we teach our school uh, you can check out our website uh, under um, noodle school um, menu main menu like you know you may find the uh, may find the uh, um, the uh, the noodle like uh, books um, in there like we have like you know books on like noodles books on like soups so um, please uh, check them out like if you are interested in um, click the, that's uh, shoulder. Um, that's a uh, pork shoulder. The cheshu. Like someone asked, like what part, what cut is is, is like the cheshu um, slice of cheshu. So that's a uh, pork shoulder. So that's that's what we have for this class. And um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you very much. Bye bye.